All right, when it comes to deploying a VM, it isn't really, it's not very complicated. Um, let me go over here to this and uh, we've already got DRS turned on. It's already fully automated, which means we're going to deploy the VM on whatever available host there is, as long as the utilization isn't too crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click and say, add a new virtual machine and I'm going to create a new virtual machine and what I'm eventually going to do is once the VM is created and it's good to go so VMware tools is installed and all that type of stuff is I will basically template it or convert it to a template and I'll just be able to redeploy pretty rapidly click on next we're going to call I'm just, <laughs> pardon me I'm going to call this LVM1 for right now or Linux VM1 and I don't really care which host it gets deployed to, I just need to deploy it. And then I'm going to deploy it on that data store. And then there is no actual um, play way to, ch to ch choose thin provision or whatever. I'll show you guys how to do that here in just a minute. I'm going to click on next, compatibility 6.7. This will be a Linux OS. And it's going to be Ubuntu. I always get yelled at for saying that wrong. Click on next. And then... We get down to here, if you expand the hard disk right here, and you come down to this where it says, uh, let's see, disk provisioning, oh, it's the storage policy. I want to, I might have to double check that, but normally when you do that, it'll tell you whether you want a thin provision or not. I'll have to d double check what the actual default storage policy is. Well, one CPU, one gig of RAM is more than sufficient. I'm going to go to client device and come down here to your data store ISO file. Click on vSAN, expand it, and then click on vSAN.stats, and that's when you're going to find the ISO file. Click on OK, click on connect, and then click on next, and then finish. That's going to create the VM, and it's going to just kind of populate right down here in, in the bottom. So there's that. So let me go double check the storage policy because that's going to be something that I need to double check on. And I need to go to storage and actions. Uh, let me think here. Where is storage policies? No, I need to go to policies and profiles, storage policy components. And okay, let's go over here to VM storage policies. And then we have vSAN storage policy. And then if we look through here, we can see that right here, thin provisioning. Right there, object space reservation, thin provisioning. If I want to edit that, I could come in here and storage, click on next. And then I could specify it's something other than other than that feature but I know it's now thin provision so that's what I want so I'm gonna go back over here to hosts and clusters and now the VM is right there I'm gonna click on it and I'm going to click power on and the VM will begin booting here momentarily and I'll click on launch web console click on OK let me go ahead and close out some of these other windows that are here that I don't need and get them squared away. So I'll walk you through the initial steps. It's actually not that complicated. So I'll pause and well, it's I'll pause until this is ready to go. All right, so I'm going to click on install Ubuntu, Ubuntu, whatever, and then I'm going to click on continue and. Erase and install Ubuntu and then click on continue and it's going to go ahead and do its thing. And I'm going to choose that I'm in Chicago. Click continue. I'm going to click inside of here, tab, until I get. If you notice right here on this in the lower left hand corner, this is actually cancel. If you tab one more time, the grayness goes away and you click on the space bar and you'll be able to click on OK. You have to do that a couple times actually. We're going to type in LVM1 
and then come down here, type in the password. I'm literally just gonna type in password because it's a lab box. I don't really care about security for the most part here. And then do all that. And then it's gonna go to the process of, you guessed it, installing. It's gonna take a little bit of time to do that. And um, that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna wait for any of the other stuff to happen because a lot of the other features like installing VMware tools, I've already covered that on the channel. So uh, if you wanna know how to do that, it's actually a pretty easy process. So that being said, that is how you install Linux on a ESXi host, and I will catch all of you in the next video.